All right, hey guys, today I'm gonna be showing you how to set up a uh, five gigahertz wireless bridge using the TP-Link TLWDR360. I'm gonna go through this pretty fast because I actually already have mine set up, so I'm not gonna be able to show all the steps in full, but I will try to show as much as you need to have it started. So the first thing you wanna do is of course buy two of these. They each come with one uh, ethernet cable which we will be plugged into the back. You'll also need a computer of some kind, so just a laptop for setting it up. You'll have to set up each of these individually. The absolute first thing you do when you get these in the mail is you want to download the latest firmware update for them. Uh, once you download it, I'll have a link in the description to the latest one that came out in 2014, so they're not that far behind. It will look like something like this. It'll be in a zip folder. You can't upload this as it is. You'll actually have to click this folder file and drag it out of your folder somewhere. So like click on this and then drag it like, I don't know, to a different folder. Once you have this extracted, or you can just click extract all files, either one. Once you have that done, you can go to the uh, router login page. In order to access this router login page, you will first have to be directly connected to the router. So uh, if you're using a laptop, first thing you want to do is turn off the Wi-Fi, of course, after you download the file. Then you'll go to... Oh, let's see if I have a picture. Then you'll want to make sure that this thing is plugged directly into your laptop. Let's go ahead and show that. You want to plug in to one of the Ethernet ports. So you plug in the Ethernet port here to your laptop's Ethernet port, wherever that is. Let's give it about a minute or two, and then you should be actually connected to this router because it has to get the DHCP settings. Then from there, you should be able to go to 192.168. Let me just show you in Firefox. Firefox tends to work a little bit better for logins. 192.168.0.1 and press enter. Your login page will look different if you're on the older version. It'll be a tiny little box around here or something and you just type in admin on both fields since that is the default login. Alright, your page will not look exactly like mine but the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to go ahead and go to system tools Firmware upgrade. Then you want to click this browse button. And then go to wherever it is you downloaded the file to. For example, let's just say I'm going to go. I'm going to go to my pictures. I didn't actually put it here, but okay. So if I put it here, you just click on the file. Let's say that this is with the file I extracted. Boop. And then you go ahead and click open, and it will show it up here. And then you click upgrade. Make sure you have the right file, not the zip fo folder. It should be, where did I put it? It should be this, that ends in .bin. WDR 3.14.1, uh, unless there's a newer version, which I doubt. As of the time of this video, this is the latest version. It should end in .bin. Then you go ahead and click Upgrade, and it should take a little while. It might give you a prompt saying, are you sure you want to upgrade? Just say yes. Uh, then it will upgrade, and it will restart, and then you'll be back at the login screen I showed you before. All right, so you'll want to do that on both routers, just in case you didn't know. Um, just unplug it from this router. So you basically just unplug it. Get your second router. Of course, that your second router has to be you know plugged in and turned on. Uh, once you give it a few seconds to start up, then you plug. Then you just like you did with the first one, plug it directly into your computer, and do the exact same process. You don't need to download the file again since both of them are the exact same router model. You just go to the thing, click browse, find your file, then click upgrade. Alright, once you have both of them set up, you'll want to decide which router you want to have as your main router that sends out the signal. So go ahead and decide on which router that's going to be. Let's go back to our diagram. You will want to be connected to the Ethernet port on that router again. And now you'll want to actually connect the WAN port labeled Internet, and it's blue with a different color so it's easy to see, to one of the Ethernet ports on your main router. If you have Fios, your router will look like this. If you have Comcast or anything else, your router may look different, but you should have at least four ports uh, surrounded by a different color that are clearly separated from the other port, which will be your WAN port on this. So you connect your, your WAN port on your TP-Link router to the LAN port on your other router. So this is connected to here, and this is connected to here. I don't know why I can't draw over it. But you get the picture, right? Alright, so once we have our Ethernet ports 
here connected to this and this connected to this, you should be able to go back to the login page. By default, everything else will be on a separate subnet. You want to have give yourself an IP address on the local network first. So click on network and then WAN. And then here you can say dynamic IP and this means that you'll get an IP address for this router from your main one. So basically this thing gets an IP address from here and that's how it connects from this to this. Uh, I chose to use a static IP address. If you know what that is, you can use that, but dynamic's probably best for um, people who don't know what that means because it will set everything automatically. So if you do choose to, do, if you do choose to go static, you want to set your, um, let me just show you dynamic. Dynamic has no fields, it will get it automatically. But static, you have to set in your IP address, so it should be an uh, IP that's not in use. Subset mask is usually this. Default gateway will be 192.168.1.1. All right, once you have that in, you'll have to click save. It'll probably ask you to restart your router, but don't do that just yet. Next thing you'll want to do is go to LAN. This will say that this is your default LAN address. This is the address that everything on your um, router will be using. So with our setup, you can use a different subnet if you want. Uh, this is the default address, and this means you'll be on a separate subnet. If you don't know what that means, just leave it that way. It'll be easier in the long run. All right. Next thing we want to do is go into wireless security or wireless settings. Uh, if you want to have the old wireless, this is what most devices connect on, like the PS3, PS4, uh, Xbox 360, you want to set this up. This will bridge your wireless connection too. So if you have two routers that are kind of far apart, you can have the same Wi-Fi, you want to have the same information here as on your other unit. So just to give you your example, this thing will be broadcasting Wi-Fi and a receiving end can be broadcasting Wi-Fi too. So that means you can have a wider reception, you can have better Wi-Fi in your home. Go ahead and set this up, set whatever um, network name you want. Uh, choose a channel, but remember it. I always, it's good to set a manual channel. Um, channel width does not really matter. Uh, mode, you just go ahead and leave this the same. And do not click any, and you can s enable uh, SSID broadcast. This means that you'll be able to actually scan for it. It should be on by default. I just leave it off. For 5 gigahertz, uh, go ahead and click save when you're done with that. And wireless security is pretty important. You want to go through here and set it up. Version. We'll let you pick between WPA2 and WPA. Uh, go ahead and check this box or you can just use the default settings. It will have a default password in there for you. If you want you can just stick with that and that's all you need for 2.4 gigahertz. Just set in a password. Make sure it's uh, one of these and then the, no, the most important part is 5 gigahertz. For 5 gigahertz you will have these settings right here. You can set your network name, whatever you want to call it. It should be different than your 2.4 name. You also want to change, uh, everything else can be left default. I believe it's on auto before. Um, this one will be A and N mixed, and this one will be auto, and this one will be auto. Uh, these work better for some of my devices. It doesn't really matter what you have set here, because both of these, like I said, both of these can be automatic and it won't cause a problem for this setup. But if you want to connect to other devices in 5 gigahertz, you might want to change these. So you can, I'd say leave them, def leave them as auto unless you're having problems. All right, so once you have all that set up, you should be just about good to go. DHCP should be on, and it will be by default. So the next thing you'll want to do is you will want to be connected to your second router, which is going to be the receiving router. So go ahead and plug in and start up your secondary, your second router. Move your laptop or your I guess desktop, desktops will be a little bit harder, but plug your desktop directly into the ethernet port on the receiving router. Now once you're there, you will type in the same exact address. But since mine's already set up, I'm gonna have to do things a little bit differently. You will still be going to 192.168.0.1, but I'm doing two because mine's already set up. You'll see why in a second. Same login as before. Alright, so the first thing you will want to do is go ahead and go to 5 GHz. Now in 5 GHz, we will be actually setting up the receiving end. So 2.4, this is where we can set up to make it so we can have um, this 
set receiver also broadcasting Wi-Fi. So again, remember better coverage everywhere. But first, we are going to be going into 5 gigahertz and setting up our receiving. So network name ha should be the same as your uh, network name on a downstairs thing or your uh, sending unit. So just go ahead and set that the same way as you can he here, see here. I have it as section 9 second gig. Uh, region, it should be United, whatever your region is. I don't really know what that mean is for. Uh, you can leave both these on auto like I said before. And here is where we'll enable WDS bridging. Right here. And then if you want to know what goes down here, then you'll want to go ahead and click survey. All right, then you'll see a list of access points you can connect to. Unless your neighbors are super tech savvy, you probably shouldn't be seeing anything since we're using 5 gigahertz, which is extremely rare. Um, your device should show up right now. It should show the SSID of the receiving unit. So you go ahead and choose connect. You can enable SSID broadcast if you want. We'll go ahead and do that. All right, and it should fill in all your information here. SSID will be filled in, the MAC address will be filled in. You'll have to fill in the bottom part yourself. So choose the security, we're using WPA. Uh, index should be filled in, authentication. And at the bottom, you'll type in your Wi-Fi password. So once you have all that filled in, go ahead and click save. And it will say here, changes to wireless uh, config will not take effect until you until the router reboots. We will not reboot just yet. Next thing we want to do, DHCP. You want to make sure this is disabled, so just go ahead and click disable and click save. And it says it will not take effect until the router reboots. We get it. All right, this is not in the official tutorial, but uh, through some reading, I figured out this can also cause a problem. Uh, go ahead and click NAT. And it says make sure your NAT is enabled. Make sure, sorry, make sure NAT is enabled if you want the hardware NAT the configuration to take effect. We'll say disable on both. Disable, disable. Go ahead and click save. And then we'll let that do its thing or whatever. We'll still have to reboot the router. Uh, the next thing is network. Where is it? Uh, LAN. Here's where we actually have to set the thing to make it different. Um, by default, it will say 1.1, one one, or sorry, 0 0.1, like I showed you before. You, this is where you change it to 0 0.2. So you can clear out the last thing and just put a 2 at the end instead of 1. Go ahead and click Save, and it will probably still say the thing about rebooting your router. Yeah. You can disable IPv6 if you get any problems, but I'll show you that at the very, very end. All right, so you just go to System Tools, go to Reboot, and then click reboot this device, boom. Say OK. Then it will take a while to reboot. Once it's done restarting, you should be able to work with the sending router by typing 192.168.0.1. And if you want to change anything on the receiving router, you should type in 192.168.0.2, like I just did. That way you can con connect to each router individually. It'll take a while to restart. That's not a live progress bar, by the way. That's just a count-up timer. All right, then you probably won't see your login page since we changed the IP address. So just go ahead up here and type in 192.168.0.2. And you'll be greeted with the login page for the other router. And remember, two means we're on the receiving end. One means we're on the sending end. If you follow the directions, and just type in admin, admin. And then boom, we're back here. All right. So we should be good. Uh, if you have any issues, one thing you can try disabling is IPv6 on both sides. Um, just go to IVP6 support, setup, and then uncheck enable and do save and then restart it. You'll have to do that on both sides, the sending end, which is dot one, and the receiving end, which is dot two. But yeah, that should be the proper setup. Uh, I forgot to show you how to mirror the uh, wireless 2.4 gigahertz. So on the receiving end, go to 2.4 gigahertz. Wireless setup. And just fill in everything exactly the same as you did on your downstairs one. Or sorry, I keep saying it downstairs because mine is actually downstairs. They're sending, transmitting unit. So go ahead and fill this in. Same way. Same, uh, same wireless name. Same mode. 
same channel and wireless security should be exactly the same too let's fill it in see mine says WPA2 it should have said that on the first one I had auto and by having two tabs open one for 0 0.2 and 0 0.1 you can make sure all your settings are the same as you can see I actually left automatic as my WPA uh, version while on the receiving end I have it as WPA2 so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that WPA2 save alright make sure they're both the same uh, anything you can do wireless advance there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can do but the only thing you really need to make sure is the same is wireless settings and wireless security once so those both are the same go ahead and click save and then reboot so save and then they will ask you to reboot go ahead and click that when you're doing the reboot it's probably better to do the transmitting end first since you have to do it with both go ahead and click reboot here and then click reboot and then it's are you sure you want to reboot yes and do the same thing here if you are asked and then once both are rebooted you should be set up and good to go you can test it by you know typing in an, uh, an address All right, once you've restarted after setting all your Wi-Fi settings, you can go ahead and try to type in an address and see if your connection is working. And hey, look, boom, there we go. We're connected to the receiving end as shown in this part. This is the receiving end. It's receiving wirelessly from the transmitter. The transmitter is the one that's actually connected to the router. So we have five gigahertz. And yeah, let's go ahead and test this speed. Alright, I ran a speed test real quick and this is the result. 11.51 um, out of my total 15 megabits, my total 15 maximum megabits per second. Upload supposed to be 15.2, but it's 12.2. So actually not bad for a 5 gigahertz reception that's a uh, thing that's pretty far away, 5 gigahertz bridge. Um, yep, 35 milliseconds, not bad for again going from a device to wireless to a receiver to the device. Uh, as you can see here is a little dip at the beginning but other than that it's pretty much solid just a few little ups and downs but not as bad as my old 2.4 gigahertz bridge 35 millisecond ping not too bad could be better alright and uh, I think there's one other thing oh yeah you'll definitely want to disable the wireless on your actual Verizon or whatever router brand you have router you can still access your old router from here you just type in 192.168.1.1 and you'll be able to access your router's login for this example I am using Verizon Fios so all I have to do is just go into wireless settings basic wireless settings and just turn wireless off and then click apply as you can see I already disabled it and then you'll be good to go. You'll be only transmitting through this device. You'll be having it relay your 2.4 gigahertz, so you'll have better reception. And you'll also have wireless Ethernet in a way. So, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, again, I'll have links to this in the description. And, yeah, have a great day. Bye.